Hi, I am Rajkala and today we are going to see on pest control in hotels. Pests are any organism such as bacteria, fungi, plant or animal that has a negative effect on human health or economics. These are organisms that we don't want around. They are always considered to be unwanted guests. Pests are significantly more sensitive in the hospitality industry. It is a zero tolerance zone. Hotel and restaurant managers must do everything they can to keep the pests away from the guests. It will cause a lot of damage and economic loss to the hospitality industry and often cause serious damage to the health by spreading disease causing microorganisms. The presence of these pests will not only speak bad of the hotel but also will embarrass the guest utilizing the facility. Sometimes you cannot avoid these uninvited guests however clean you keep the premises. Thus, pest control is a very important job of the housekeeping department. At the end of this lesson, you will understand the various types of pests and the means to control them. Pests generally enter inside the building seeking for food, shelter and for the right temperature and humidity. Good housekeeping personnel should be vigilant enough in spotting the signs of infestation and report immediately to the housekeeping manager so that actions can be taken. You may see a variety of pests, but majority of them will be attracted to the food premises only. If anything buzzes, squeaks or eats our food and has more legs than us and creeps around, we generally don't like. So what does this pest do creeping around the premises? They contaminate the food, they spoil the food by eating part of it and they carry diseases and causes physical damage to human beings. Using of pesticides might give a solution to the problem of pest, but we always have to remember that the stuff that is toxic to pest is toxic to humans and other living and non-living things too. A pest can be divided into six categories. Pest which causes physical damage like termites, rats, etc. Pests which contaminates food and the environment like cockroaches, flies, mice and rat. Pests which are comparatively harmless but repulsive to many people like spiders and silverfish. Those which attach to food stores like floor beetles, bacon beetles. Parasites which directly attack the human beings like bed bugs and fleas and seasonal nuisances or casual intruders from outside like ants and earwigs. Now how do we identify the pest invasion? Accurate identification of pests is required for effective pest management program. Unless you know the pests, never ever attempt a pest control program. The pest control will be easier and cost effective if you know about the pest, its growth and development and the means by which it spreads. Continuous pests can be easily predicted. Sporadic and potential pests may be predictable if you know the circumstances or the conditions that favor their growth and development. To identify and control the pest, you need to know the physical features of the pest, the characteristics of damage, their development, whether they are continuous, sporadic or potential pests and what are your control goals. Always control a pest only if it is causing more harm than the reasonable limit and use a control strategy that will reduce the number of pests causing as little harm as possible. What are the factors which encourage the intrusion of pests? Factors which encourage the intrusion of pests are the uncovered foods, unclean tables and work areas, unclean floors and cupboards, blocked drains or unclean toilets, pools of water due to leaking taps, overflowing drains, etc. Now what are the indications for pest infestation? The presence of the pests can be identified by their 
live or dead bodies including eggs and larvae, the dropping of insects and rodents, damage seen over the food surface, packing cardboards, etc. Foods found near to stacks or cartons, pungent odors, bad smell of mice or cockroaches, leg prints over the spilt floor, black greasy smears on the walls or around the pipes, and apparent loss of small amounts of food. But the problem is, the insect like flies vomit on the food during feeding and might have just visited the refuse site or feces before landing on the food, thereby spreading the disease causing microorganisms. Now, what are the goals of pest control? The three main goals of pest control are prevention, suppression and eradication. Prevention is keeping a pest away from becoming a problem. Suppression is reducing the number of pests or reducing it to an acceptable level. Eradication is destroying the entire pest population from the premises. Now, let us learn the goals of pest control in detail. Prevention should be the first goal when the pest presence or abundance is predicted in advance. Prevention can be done by following certain basic measures such as sealing of all wall and floor openings or crevices, ensuring that all the doors and windows are tightly fitted, rodent proof doors, windows, pipes and ducts can be used, fly screen doors and windows can be fitted and cleaning the store areas, preparation and service areas thoroughly at the end of each working day. The next is suppression. The intent of suppression is to reduce the number of pests after detection. Prevention and suppression are joint goals. This will help to suppress the pests already present and prevent them from coming up again into the surroundings. Next is eradication. This is a very rare situation as it is difficult to achieve. This method is generally used when any foreign pest enters the establishment. Often these types of strategies are supported by the government. Thus, indoor environments can be easily safeguarded against pests than the outdoor areas as they are smaller, less complex and more easily controlled than the outdoor areas. Now, let us look into the methods of pest control. The various methods of pest control include the natural controls, the applied controls, biological controls, cultural control, mechanical or physical control, chemical control and ensuring proper sanitation. Let us see each method in detail now. Natural controls. Certain natural forces help in increase of certain types of pests. These forces work independently of human beings and help or hinder the growth of these pests. Example, the climate, natural barriers like enemies, water or moisture, availability of shelter, etc. So you should be aware of the nature's influence on pests and take advantage of them. Climate and weather conditions such as temperature, day length and humidity affect the pest activity and rate of reproduction. Rain, freezing, temperature and drought kills or suppresses the pests by affecting their growth and development. Natural enemies such as birds, reptiles, amphibians, fish, mammals feed on pests and control their number. Pathogens often suppress pest population. Geographical barriers like mountains and large bodies of water restrict the spread of many pests from one zone to another. Pests can survive only if food and water are available. Once it is exhausted, it dies or becomes inactive. Wintering sites and places for hiding are very essential for the survival of the pests.
The second is applied controls. These do not control quickly or completely. Example, host resistance. Some plants, animals and structures resist the pests better than others. It works in one of the three ways. Chemicals in the host prevent the pest from completing its life cycle. The host is tolerant than the other varieties and thus less, less likely to be seriously damaged by the pest attack. The host has physical characteristics that make it more difficult to attack. Third one is the biological control. It includes introduction of natural enemies like parasites and predators. More of pest enemies can be released into the target area which are not present before. But this does not assure of pest eradication. The degree of control keeps fluctuating. But sufficient control can be achieved to certain extent though there might be a lag between the increase of pests and corresponding increase in the natural control. Pests can also be biologically altered by making the pests sterile and use of free moons or juvenile hormones. Free moons can be useful in monitoring the pest population. Sometimes it is also used as a control tool. A manufactured copy of a free moon that a female insect uses to attract the male can be used to confuse the males and prevent the mating, resulting in lower number of pests. The fourth is cultural control. Cultural practices like altering the environmental condition of the host helps to suppress the infestation. This disrupts the normal relationship between the insect and the host and makes it less likely to survive, grow or reproduce. The next is mechanical or physical control. These are the devices or machines like traps, screens, barriers, nets, fences, electricity, radiations, etc. used for preventing the spread of pest. Change in the environmental conditions like refrigeration, light, heat and humidity can also help in controlling certain pests like insects and disease agents. The next is chemical control. Chemical agents like pesticides help to either attract or repel the pest. They are generally the fastest way to control the pest. And the last is sanitation. Good sanitation like improving the cleanliness, eliminating the pest harborage and increasing the frequency of garbage picks, decontaminating the equipments, materials and other possible carriers helps in creating a pest free area. Proper design of kitchen and food storage area helps in reducing access and shelter for the pest. Now let us see on the common pests, their characteristics and the methods to control them. Ants. These insects generally invade in large numbers in search of food, especially sweets. They enter by crevices along a definite track in procession and can be systematically trapped where it enters the establishment. To prevent ants, vulnerable areas must be emptied thoroughly, clean and borax which repels them should be spread over the shelf until it ceases to come. If nest is seen, it can be destroyed by placing 2 tablespoons of carbon bisulfide at the entrance as the vapour kills the ants. But it is highly inflammable, so should be used with great care. Boiling water poured over the nest repeatedly also kills the ants. Next is flies. These are filthy insects which are very dangerous to health as they contaminate the food. It causes diseases such as typhoid, cholera, dysentery and so on. So how do we prevent them? Try to destroy all the possible breeding grounds before the egg laying begins. Burn all the garbages, keep the dustbins covered, maintain good standards of cleanliness in the surrounding, 
and fly poison concocted with 3 teaspoon of formalin in one pi a pint of milk or water with sugar added in sauces should be kept in susceptible areas to trap and kill the flies. Aerosol fly killer sprays are also effective. It also carries disease causing germs on their legs and saliva and transfer it to the food on which they sit. The next is cockroaches. These are nocturnal insects which are seen only during night. They are present in drains and dark secluded places. There are two types, German cockroaches and oriental cockroaches. German cockroaches are about 10 to 15 millimeter in length, lighter yellowish brown. It can climb smooth vertical surfaces and prefers warm and humid conditions. Whereas, oriental cockroaches are about 20 to 22 millimeter in length, dark brown in color, found in cooler and less humid areas such as drains. These are the ones that generally cause diseases such as dysentery and gastroenteritis. These cockroaches feed on fecal matter and also the food. They are most difficult pests to eradicate. So what we can do? Proprietary cockroach killer preparations can be used in the infested areas. Pest control experts need to be called if it again persists. The next is mosquitoes. Mosquitoes transmit diseases such as malaria, filaria and yellow fever and the life cycle of it begins in water. So do not allow water to stagnate in and around the surrounding premises of the hotel. Repair and fill all the pits and puddles. Cover the drains and pour kerosene to prevent the larvae from thriving and growing into adult mosquitoes. And a very good eco-friendly method is place the water around the property, allow the mosquitoes the, to lay the eggs. Before the egg develops, discard the water. The next is bed bugs. These are tiny parasitic creatures that feed on blood of humans. They are generally present on beds, cloths, furniture, upholstery, etc. Again, the activity is seen only at night. The size varies from 4 to 5 mm long, flat head with the oval body and generally yellow to white in color. And the matured ones are light red or brown in color and gives a very unpleasant odor. It can be prevented by fumigation, thick application of kerosene oil or pouring boiling water in the crevices. The next is rats and mice. They are potentially hazardous. Mice are generally smaller, slender, has got big ears with respect to their bodies, brown in color with gray underbellies, has got a thin tail equal to the length of their head and body. It causes food poisoning, infection, jaundice, etc. They generally nibble and contaminate the foodstuffs, utensils and worktops with urine, droppings and fur which spreads the disease and some are fatal to humans. The droppings of the mice are black and look like apple pips but generally smaller. They also tend to gnaw on everything from electrical appliances to floorboards. How we can prevent it? By poisoning, trapping, fumigating or rat proofing of the building helps to prevent both the rats and the mice. Next is silverfish. They are generally silvery grey insect and looks like minute fish without fins. They are about 1 cm long, they are nocturnal and found in moist areas. They feed on cellulosic materials like papers and fabrics. It can be prevented by keeping the moist areas clean and treatment with insecticides like pyrethrum and sodium fluoride crystals are very effective. The next is termites. These are social insects, they are also called as white ants. There are two types, dry wood and ground termites. Both feed on cellulose found in wood and wood products for nutrition. Ground termites damage more by creating mud tubes from soil to wooden portions of the building. 
it may access through the construction joints, cracks, plumbing electrical joints, etc. It can be prevented by using treated lumbar for construction, coat any untreated exposed wood with insecticides, seal all the cracks and crevices and in case of infestation, kick out the holes, inject with appropriate insecticides such as ortho dichlorobenzene and finally wax, varnish and coat with linseed oil to cover the pores. Now let us see on the types of pesticides. There are three different forms of pesticides. They are solids in the form of powder, crystal and granular form, liquids which are milky white in color and aerosols which are sprayed out in a fine mist. Pesticides are generally classified based on the pest they control. They differ according to their effect on various organisms. Some are selectively toxic to the target pest and they do not affect any other organism. Hence, these type of pesticides are mostly preferred for the hotel industry. Non-selective pesticides which generally harm the other organisms should be avoided as far as possible. The commonly used pesticides are insecticides, herbicides, fungicides and rodenticides. Now let us see about each in detail. Insecticides. Insecticides are used to protect the plants and other areas from insect damage. Example, mosquitoes, ants, flies, termites, etc. Herbicides. These are used to control the weeds or other unwanted plants in the gardens, ponds and lakes. Example, the crabgrass, dandelions, etc. Fungicides. These are sprayed or dusted to kill certain fungus that are pathogenic and may infect the human beings, plants and animals. Example, the smuts, mildew, molds, etc. Most of the disinfectants used in hotels are fungicides. Fabrics can also be treated to prevent the rotting by fungicides. Next is rodenticides. Rats generally carry diseases such as rabies, fever, tularemia, typhus, etc. They also destroy the dry storage areas and rodenticides help in eliminating such animals in areas such as kitchen and storage. So far, we have seen the type of pesticides. Now, let us see on the common pesticides used. Chlordane, which are used for household pests, termites and cockroaches. Diazinon, which are used for cockroaches, ticks, ants, silverfish, spider, etc. DDVP, which are used for cockroaches and houseflies. Kelten, which are used for mites, red spider and carpet beetle. Malathion, which are used for again mites, household pests, centipede, millipede, etc. Methoxychlor, which is used for lice, fleas, bed bugs and silverfish. Gamma HCH, which are used for wood boring insects. Warfarin, which are used for rats and mice. Permethrin, Dalerin for textile pests and DDT for various household insects. Advantages of using pesticides. Modern pesticides are very effective in preventing the pests. The results are quick, economical way of controlling the pests and cost effective. The disadvantage are, if pesticides are not used correctly, it may affect the human health and cause serious injuries or death. It can affect other non-target animals directly, example, spraying of a particular pesticide to kill caterpillar might kill other harmless insects like ladybird, if not properly disposed may contaminate or poison the water beds and soil and pesticides can also enter the food chain. Now how do we avoid the harmful effects of pest control? 
as we know pest control involves control tactics to control the pest more than simple identifying the treatment site whether it's going to be indoor or outdoor usually involves other living organisms such as human beings animals plants etc and non living things such as air water the work surface etc all these will be affected when pesticides are used this could affect the entire system in which the pest exists hence proper judgment has to be made before using the pesticides without harming anyone or anything the precautionary measures and instructions has to be studied from the labels of the pesticides to prevent any pest from entering care for using pesticides all the pesticides sold commercially are relatively safe but always the guidelines provided by the manufacturer should be followed with respect to handling and storage never exceed the recommended concentration and dose rate as these are researched and are given at the safest limit follow the time and method of application and special instructions or warnings strictly follow the first aid procedure in case of accident always store these pesticides away from children food pets flammable items etc and also after treating a place for pests always wear gloves when handling the pesticides if reusable gloves are used wash it thoroughly as soon as possible it is also advisable to use face mask to prevent from inhaling the pesticides whether it is a sprayer or powder always wash the hands after spraying the pesticides never dispose unused chemicals in drains or toilets or in any water source and take care to protect the wildlife and natural habitats from pesticide contamination so why do we need to control pest infestation it is to prevent the spread of diseases to prevent loss of business due to contaminated food to prevent safety hazards caused by damage of electrical cables pipes etc to prevent the overall spoilage and wastage of foods and to comply with the local hygiene regulations pest control failure sometimes the pest might not be controlled even after applying pesticides the situation should be reviewed to determine what went wrong there are several possible reasons for failure of chemical pests such as pest resistance sometimes the pest may be resistant to certain pesticides each time a pesticide is used it selectively kills the most susceptible pest some pests avoid the pesticides others withstand the effects and may pass on the traits to their offsprings allowing them to survive the opportunity for resistance becomes greater if the same type of pesticide is used repeatedly using different pesticides or rotating the pesticides will help to reduce the development of pest resistance the other reasons for failure are it may be because of wrong pesticides wrong dosage and wrong application or it might not be applied at the appropriate time or location pest control contract now we know that pests are a nuisance to the hotel hence a housekeeper must consider the following precautionary measures before providing the contract outside ensure all the areas are covered in the agreement for contract including the gardens and the lawns ensure the contractor uses only grade 1 or isi certified pesticides make sure he follows the schedule and deputes efficient and well groomed staffs and ensure minimum disturbance and inconvenience caused to the guest while the pest control activity is going on thus in any hospitality business nothing will chase away your guests like making them stay with the unwanted guest pest control is not a one time job 
it is an ongoing problem that needs continuous management. Pest control is very important for maintaining a safe environment and is one of the major duties of the housekeeping department. Some of the common pests are flies, ants, mosquitoes, bed bugs, lizards, rats, mice, cockroaches, etc. Now that we know that different pests intrude at different times of the season and years, prevention should be the first goal on identification of the pest. Successful pest control starts with good sanitation, but it should always be remembered that some pesticides can cause harm to the human beings and other organisms and environment. Sporadic and potential pests can be identified if you know the environmental conditions or circumstances under which it comes and appropriate pest control measures has to be taken. Wrong products may lead to unsatisfactory control. Hence, it has to be used only if the pests are properly identified. Thus, the main objectives of any pest control are to minimize the number of pests, to minimize the damage, inconvenience and distress that they cause and to eliminate human disease that they may transmit. I hope you would have understood on the different types of pest and how it can be identified and eradicated. Thank you very much for your patient listening. Thank you.